Welcome back to another Workspace Academy tutorial created by Media Agility, the premier Google partner for helping users and admins work smarter and get the most out of your investment in Google Workspace. In this video, we're going to cover data loss prevention for Gmail, what it is, and how you can get started to begin proactively protecting your organization's sensitive data. If you find this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe below, and let's get started. DLP for Gmail scans your organization's incoming and outgoing mail looking for sensitive information as defined by you and your teams. You can then rely on the AI and ML behind Workspace to act on your behalf based on the content compliance rules you have in place. It's a really powerful security tool available for admins to help prevent accidental and intentional data loss as well as stopping email solicitation and further suppressing phishing attempts. Now, here we are in the, the admin console. We have navigated over to the Gmail section within the Workspace apps. And within Gmail, you simply scroll on down to where you find your compliance. There's a lot of different things that you can do within these compliance features. Uh, we have our email storage, uh, we have our optical character recognition, but we're gonna focus down here on our content compliance. And these are the, the rules that we have uh, built out. What we're gonna do is just simply build out another rule. We'll walk through this just to see high level how you can build out a simple rule that protects your organization against the sharing and solicitation for social security numbers. So this is, again, an SSN rule. We don't want anything being shared. No SSNs being shared externally. We also don't want anybody soliciting us for social security numbers. So if anybody says, uh, you know, if they send a social security number through, we don't want that coming through. So we're going to affect messages both inbound and outbound. It's okay if they're sending them internally, as long as they don't get external. We'll leave those unchecked for now. The next thing we want to define the expressions that we're looking for. For this rule, the SSN rule, we're going to look for any of the, the following to match, and we're going to set, simply set the expression over here. We could do a, a simple content match where we add, you know, SSN. So now if somebody is sending something to us through uh, an inbound looking for an SSN, it's going to flag that, it's going to stop that. Uh, for this, though, we're going a, a step further. We're going for predefined content matches. We're looking for social security numbers, which are very well recognized by Google's AI and ML. So we can use the predefined content match to find that. It's actually the very first one here for content compliance. As you can see, uh, similar to Drive DLP, we have just an extensive list that's up kept by Google. No need to you know, stay up to date on what the latest configuration is for uh, you know, your CUS IP number or anything like that. Simply select that. We know the confidence can be high because again, this is a very well-defined number. We save that and now we simply move on to what happens when this comes through or when it tries to exit our organization. We can take a softer stance and simply modify the message. Maybe we want to modify it to simply change the route or change the envelope recipient, have it instead of going external, it goes right to an admin and you can have that conversation one on one with the person who has sent this, this email, let them know that, hey, we're not doing that anymore. Um, you could also remove attachments or you know what, we can take it one step further and require secure transport or encrypt the message if not encrypted with SMIME. You want it to be further encrypted again. This is not that type of rule for this. We don't want this information leaving our organization. So regardless of encryption, we want it to stop at the door before it tries to get out. So for modifying, what I would do in this case is simply change the route or change the envelope recipient and have it go somewhere that is not external and somewhere that you can investigate later. Uh, what I would recommend is going a step further for social security numbers or anything this important. You don't want this getting out of your organization. So simply reject the message or have it go to a quarantine if you do want to go with, again, a softer method of, uh, of approaching your end users who are sort of violating these rules. Reject the message, though, is the, the simplest, most straightforward way you're going to be able to do it. You can reject the message and give them a custom rejection notice if you'd like. Uh, this violates our SSN sharing policy. Simple enough. Now, when the user sends that email, it never leaves your organization. It gets caught, it gets flagged, you get alerted as an admin, and the end user simply gets the pop-up that says, you know, this has not been sent out. It violates our social security number sharing policy. You know, maybe add something contact, contact support if you have any questions. <laughs> uh, but that's just a, a quick and easy way to set up some very simple content compliance 
take some time, look at the predefined content rules. There's uh, a lot of them out there. I'm sure that many of them will fit your organization and what you're trying to stop from leaving your organization. There's a lot to be uncovered here. We're just scratching the surface. Uh, thanks for watching. For more Google Workspace tips, tricks, tools, and how-tos, please be sure to subscribe below. And if you and your team want to get even more out of your Google Workspace licenses with guaranteed supports times, expert advisory, proactive feature release updates, and more, all at no cost to you, contact Media Agility today using the link in the description. Till next time, here's to working smarter with Google Workspace.